Hey everybody, I'm sure you guys know exactly where I'm going with this video because of the title, but I'd like to say it anyway. Thank you so much for 100 subscribers. You know, I've learned a lot more by doing YouTube than I ever thought I would, and I really, really want to thank you guys for sticking through it as I've been on this learning experience. The next year is going to be amazing. We have a lot of stuff lined up for you guys. We've been cranking out the ideas. We've been writing scripts and stuff. Me, Digital Arts, and the other boys. It's going to be a fun time. It's going to be a fun time. And along the way, I would really like to hear what you guys think about it all in the comments. Because we will tailor our videos to suit you guys' needs and preferences as much as we can. You can even just leave a song in the comments and be like, I like this song. And we'll probably just make a video for you around that song, trying to work it, trying to make it entertaining, because that is the goal of this channel, and it always will be, to entertain you guys, to just give you guys something to watch, and leave you feeling, you know, good about it at the end, you know, maybe a laugh, maybe a little inspiration, whatever, maybe just a cool story, but that is what we are trying to do here as content creators on YouTube. Now, I'm going to leave you guys with two choices. One, you can stay here with me, and I'm going to tell you how I started making videos on YouTube. There's kind of an interesting story behind that. Or two, you can head on over to the Social Blade Top 100 Most Popular Video Livestream. Because, you know what, guys? I'm kind of tired of these YouTube channels, and they get like, oh, my 500 subscribers special, and oh, my 100 subscribers special, and all they do is they thank you guys. I'm going to submit myself to a little bit of pain, because along the way, I've actually lost some subscribers, and I want to make this an especially special little benchmark. So what I'm going to do over there on that other video is I'm going to watch the top 100 YouTubers' most popular video, and when I say YouTubers, I mean like real people or companies that have influenced YouTube enough that I kind of count them as central to the culture of YouTube. The Rock is not. Rihanna is not. Eminem is not. Even though Eminem has spawned a lot of memes, he's primarily a musician. And I really am not going to be focusing on musicians there, but I will tell you that everybody else is fair game. <laughs> so, if you'd like to see that, and there's also going to be a bit of a punishment thing involved, where I punish myself for every subscriber I've lost, along my way to 100 subscribers. If you want to see that video, go check it out. It's right up there. Now, since you're still here, I assume you want to know the story of how this whole thing got started. So, let me take you back. Sophomore year in high school, okay? I was in a Spanish class, and I met this guy who had an impeccable beard and was quite the meme lord. I can't say his name, of course, online, but he played this game called Hearthstone, which is basically a mix of Pokemon and Yu-Gi-Oh, and I would watch him play the game, and I thought it was really interesting. So I started playing the game as well, and this was back in the day when Hearthstone wasn't like completely like full of aggro and stuff. Like He played uh, Control Warrior and Freeze Mage, and he was very good at it, and I really liked that strategic gameplay style. So... I began to play Hearthstone because I wanted to be able to compete against him when we played like friendly battles because he would always kill me so fast because I had like no cards or anything and no experience. So I was god awful, just garbage. So I worked really hard trying to get good at the game and eventually I got decent at it. Fast forward to the next year, I beat him a couple times here and there. Usually he still wins though. He's been playing the game a lot more than me. He knows, you know, kind of stuff like that. But I find out that a lot of my other friends have been into Hearthstone as well for a really long time. So basically junior year in math class all we did is we pretended to like take notes or whatever and then we'd be playing Hearthstone like in the back of the class. So that might explain why my math teacher didn't write me a college recommendation letter after I asked her to. It could have been that. It could have been that indeed. But all of us, we did get good grades, so hmm, I don't know. But anyway, so I really, I started playing Hearthstone because all my friends were kind of playing it at the time. So then I decided, hey, you know, it's whatever. I'll just do Twitch live streams. So I started doing Twitch, and this is where I started off doing my videos. This is, this right here is what you'd see, like, right here. Where, between my hands, this is, this is the Twitch live stream. 
basically this is where I started off and that's why I'm doing the video here. It was pretty fun and I gained a very small audience, but they watched all the stuff and it was okay. I will admit very readily that those streams were absolute garbage and most of the stream was not me playing the game, it was me trying to figure out how to get my crap computer to actually transmit the sound of the game and the sound of my microphone well enough that they could actually hear something. Because most of the time it was just so quiet it was like just it was such a pain for them to watch and i'm really thankful that they like kept watching it because i don't really know why they did it but the chat was pretty funny honestly like we had some good banter in the chat so that was my first piece of equipment i ever bought was a five dollar like little headset at best buy and i still have that headset and i will never get rid of that headset because it was my first investment into all these video things and Back in the day with Twitch, I never set up any kind of money-making thing. It was just, I was just, you know, doing Twitch to have fun with my friends or whatever. Fast forward maybe like four months after that, I thought, hey, I already have all this, like, footage. It automatically records to my computer. OBS automatically records these streams to my computer. I'll just take these and upload them to YouTube so that if my friends can't see the live stream, at least they could watch the video. Again, kind of dumb, because, like, you know, my friends were there for the chat. They weren't really there for the gameplay, but whatever. I just thought that'd be fun. So I would just take these big, unedited, hour, two-hour-long videos, and i just straight upload them to YouTube. I would have a title, but I wouldn't have a thumbnail. I wouldn't have, like, any cool title. I'd just be, like, I'd put, like, the date or something stupid. And then it was just, like, this really like low uh, resolution really pixelated like almost no noise gameplay online and that was pretty much it i remember the first time i ever did a video just for youtube i think i was reviewing old gods cards maybe i wasn't maybe i was re reviewing some other cards or whatever but basically what i did is because I think, yeah, I did, actually. I reviewed cards on stream. I would, like, go to the website and I would click through all the cards that have been released and I would, like, talk about them or whatever. That was actually good because I could, like, we could, like, argue in the chat or whatever, like, you know, different uses. Whatever. <laughs> it's it's hard stuff. Nobody cares about it really anymore. Uh, but basically, how I did my first YouTube video, like, where I actually sat down and was like, I'm going to make a video for YouTube. I got all the cards and I put them into PowerPoint and I had like a background and stuff and I was basically emulating Trump SC. Um, I thought he was really cool, like the way that he, his like he had a really intellectual analytical kind of approach to Hearthstone and that was kind of the way I like to do it because I'm really unlucky. Um, if you guys ever play me or watch me play any kind of video game, you'll realize how unlucky I am. And it's really funny. I, I'm never, ever lucky. Like, literally forcing. But anyway. So, I appreciated that because that was the only way I could really get an edge. Was to, like, mathematically kind of, like, you know, make myself get an edge. So, I kind of emulated his style because, you know, I respected what he did and all that stuff. So then, I kind of realized at that point that I need thumbnails for my videos because strangers were watching these videos. So I started putting thumbnails on my videos. So what did I do? I literally put the exact same thumbnail on all my videos. Like I literally just had a, like a, an image file that I had like used the snipping tool on like, you know, Microsoft snipping tool. And I had just taken that and I was just putting the same image on all my thumbnails. And I was like, eh, that's fine, it's good. I mean, honestly, it didn't match the quality of the video, so. But then after that, I basically started adding different text to my thumbnails, and I would do various other things, and I actually started pulling away from Twitch so much and focusing more on YouTube because I liked being able to, like, plan out a video. And honestly, I liked being able to scrap a video if the audio was terrible because literally I had to reset my microphone every single time I did a stream and it would still fail most of the time. So the audio was a huge hassle for me and I really, I really, you know, couldn't do anything about it very, for like long term. It was just all very like short fixes and I'm sure if I had better knowledge of computers and stuff, I might be able to like, you know, actually fix the fundamental problem, but I don't and I never did. So basically that's why I liked YouTube videos because I could control it more and I could plan it out more. And if I didn't like what I said, I could go back, something like that. Um, especially with card reviews, 
when I would think about it a little bit more, I'd be like, you know, that's actually not true. And then I could change it if I you know I caught it or whatever. So then I began editing videos in Movie Maker because Movie Maker was already downloaded on my laptop. Well, my family laptop. I didn't have a laptop, but anyway. So that was already there. And I used OBS, PowerPoint, the snipping tool, and Windows Movie Maker. And that was my package. It was, that was all I used. And the $5 headset. And um, that was, um, and that worked. It did work. And then I kind of had a breakout uh, video. It was the I'm just a swimmer video, which still haunts me to this day. People, you know, around college are like, hey, are you just a swimmer? And I'm like, I don't know you. Like, how do you know this? But I mean, honestly, you know, it has 3,000 views now, maybe a little bit more. But to be honest, it wasn't that big of a video. The reason it got so many views was because a swimming magazine picked it up and they did a little article about it. And at the time, I was flabbergasted. I was like, because I used to be on the swim team, I was like amazed that like I got any amount of public attention and I was so happy. Like I uploaded the video and it got like 10 views like all my other videos used to get. And then like out of absolutely nowhere, so just like hundreds of views started coming in and I could just, I was just watching the view count like go up because I like ran to the library. I logged in to the creator studio or whatever, looked at my analytics in real time and there's still like these huge numbers and I was like, oh my gosh, it's amazing. And then I started getting super self-conscious because I realized that that video is like, it's okay, but it's also me singing and you know, it's like, eh, eh. You know, it's kind of embarrassing. So that happened and I got like 2,000 views in a day and it blew my mind away. I was like, whoa, oh my gosh, this is amazing. And I gained like, uh, probably like 10 or 15 subscribers off that video. And I was like, oh my gosh. Cause like before then I had like much less than 20 because I was at 20 subscribers when I did the 2017 match burning video, I was at 21 subscribers, I believe. But that video was a huge deal for me. And it kind of opened the floodgates because it was like the first creative video I ever did, right? Everything else was just Hearthstone, Hearthstone, Hearthstone. The same general structure to the videos every time. You know, I throw in some jokes, but it was really just gameplay. That video was creative. And it took a lot of effort, but then I was rewarded for that effort with like all this like cool success and stuff. So then I kind of realized, not because of the success, of course, but just because the freedom of being able to do like a creative video and then people actually enjoy it. I was like, oh my gosh, I want to make these weird creative videos instead of just hearts on stuff. And what happened was, is I actually over time stopped playing Hearthstone entirely. I don't play Hearthstone at all anymore. I haven't touched it. There's been like a ton of expansions. I haven't even looked at the new cards. It's like, I, it, it's, I, I, I don't want to say I've grown out of it, but I have grown distant to Hearthstone. I deleted the app off my phone for more space when I was filming the, um, the match video because I hadn't played the app in forever and my phone was running out of space and I was filming me, you know, putting on the matches on the board for the 2018 match video. And I just thought, hey, I'll delete it. I, yeah, why not? So I buy Hearthstone. <laughs> Pretty much forever. Um, if I ever want to, I mean, maybe for like 100,000 subscribers. Not that I expect to get there, but if I do get there, I might kick it back old school and do a Twitch stream. So basically, at that point, I really kind of committed to doing creative videos in my mind, but in practice, I was still pumping out the Hearthstone stuff. I started working on the, I did another swimming song, the 10 Days of Winter Practice song, uh, the Aquatic Mannequin Challenge. So you see basically what I did is I was doing creative stuff for swimming because my whole life was basically school, Hearthstone with my friends, swimming. That was like, those were the three things I did and those are the three things like I knew. And school videos, I had enough school during the day, okay? Swimming, you know, I could make some funny memes about it, but to be honest, it was like five hours a day most days. I was not really that into that. And then Hearthstone, was dry, boring, and nobody cared. So I was just kind of in this weird, like, limbo area, and I was like, I'll go for the swimming memes, go! And then I'll just pump out Hearthstone videos as they come kind of thing, you know? 
So that went through, and then I don't even know. I think I made some like, no, then I think the match burning video, big story behind the match burning video, you guys don't get to hear it yet. But you have to wait a little longer for that one to come out, <laughs> maybe three or four years. But there's a, there's a very interesting story behind that video. Oh, <laughs> yep. But anyway, I guess my biggest failure on this channel so far was I was I was trying to grow the channel. As all YouTubers do, you start researching other people who are successful. And back in back in those times at least, um, iDubs and you see and I hate talking about iDubs now because after I made the iDubs video and it failed spectacularly, I realized that a lot of YouTubers talk about iDubs and every time they do it's cringy as heck. And so I don't want to talk about iDubs anymore, but I keep having to talk about it because that video was like my biggest failure ever. And that's like notable and I keep bringing it up because it's notable and I learned stuff from that video. So I keep having to bring up iDubs and I always, and every time I say his name out loud, I swear, every time I say his name, I cringe inside. I'm like, ah, I'm doing that thing. No. So the video I made on that YouTuber generated a lot of dislikes and I learned some important lessons about that. Number one, because, well, here's, here's what it was. I wanted to try filming with my iPhone because before that, I had only filmed with my laptop's face cam and it was really, really bad. The iPhone camera is clear and I've used it for this whole like season of YouTube I've been on, like these last like six months or whatever. I've used the phone. So I really want to try it. But the problem is that the iPhone mic is a lot better than my $5 mic that I used when I would stream or do any other video. So what happened was is I started filming on the uh, phone and I picked like a, a corner and I was thinking about it. I was like, let's try to make this look like a news show. Like like I'm an anchor on a news thing or whatever. So I was like, well, you know, today it was about like, doing my like newscaster voice, you know? <laughs> and then like, you know, almost without a transition, I cut straight into a screen capture with the $5 mic. And people in the comments were like, your audio just went to complete trash. Woo! And like, just dislikes, dislikes, dislikes. And I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Because this one guy, he commented on the video and he's like, hey, these findings are pretty accurate and pretty neat. A really good video content was, your presentation's absolutely garbage. And I was like, oh, I see. It really doesn't matter if what you say is good if the way you present it is bad. And I learned that lesson. And then basically, because all my videos are trash, uh, you can tell that I didn't really put it into practice, but I do know it conceptually now. So I am proud to say I learned something. I learned it, I can't do it though. Oh well, but anyway, so that was my biggest failure. My, biz my biggest success ever, the swimmer video. My biggest failure ever, the items video. Happened within that first little stretch of videos. But yeah, that is kind of the story of this channel. And right now, yeah. yep, I uh, filmed this through midnight. So right now it is January 5th. I've been doing YouTube for cumulatively probably about a year now. And I'd like to say thank you to every single one of my subscribers. Without you guys, honestly, it wouldn't be the same. I love watching people like the videos and I I I enjoy knowing that you know you guys are enjoying the content and this video itself is not gonna get many views thank you videos never do but you know what for those of you who watch this video I really would like to say I appreciate you immensely and I hope you'll enjoy whatever I make in the future and as always I will see you in the next one. Bye. Infinite power.